As you can see here from this demo video, Detectron 2 provides high quality implementations of various state-of-the-art object detection algorithms used in Facebook's production software. Hey everybody, this is Chris here introducing you to this week's weekly Ionize project. This week's open source project that we've ionized is Facebook's Detectron 2 project. So let's get started. Before getting into the details on how to run this project on Ionize, let me first give you some information on what exactly Facebook's Detectron 2 project is. So Detectron 2 is an open source object detection project written in PyTorch by Facebook's AI research team. As you can see here from this demo video, Detectron 2 provides high quality implementations of various state-of-the-art object detection algorithms used in Facebook's production software. Okay, so now let's try and run this project on Ionize. So the first thing we do when trying to run any project on Ionize is that we go to the corresponding Ionize page for that project. So for Detectron 2, we have Ionize Detectron 2, which can be found here at this URL. Let me highlight it here. Um, we see here some kind of small background information on the Ionize Detectron 2 project. Interesting to note here that all the uh, inference models used in this project are use ResNet50 and a feature py pyramid network as their backbone. And then we also have some information here. If you're interested on running this project locally through Docker, follow these instructions and you should be able to do that as well. However, we recommend running this project on INIs. So let's click on this big purple button here. Okay, so now we're on the uh, INIs project for Detectron 2. So the first thing we need to do before we test any object detection algorithm is that we need an appropriate image to test on. So thankfully, the INIs team have given us a link here. So let's click on this sample photo download link. And we have a picture here that's perfect for object detection because there's lots of very interesting instance objects such as three instances of horses, three instances of people, and then various other vehicles as well. So this image is perfect for a testing object detection. So let's first click on save image. Let me give this a name and then save. Um, now let's try and run this image against one of these algorithms here. So I'm gonna try instant segmentation first. So let's, um, so to run this image against an instant segmentation algorithm, let's click on try it out. Upload that image and then let's press execute and see what happens. Okay, great. So now this is what we've got back. This is the image we've been given back from that algorithm. Um, as you can see here, all the instances of all the different foreground objects, such as horses or people, have been given a bounding box. And even more interestingly is that each pixel corresponding to that instance has been given a specific unique color to correspond to that instance. So for this person here, that color is blue. For this instance of this horse here, that color is yellow. And it seems to have worked pretty well. So that should give you an overview as to what instance segmentation is. Assigning a specific pixel color to all pixels belonging to each individual foreground instance, such as a horse or a person or a car. Okay, cool. Now let's try that same image, except on this panopti panoptic segmentation algorithm and see what we get back. So let's click on post here, try it out. Let's click on that same image again, and then upload and let or execute and let's see what we get back. Okay, cool. So looking at this response image here, we see we have the same each instance of all foreground objects has been segmented and given a separate color, like in the instant segmentation algorithm, except this time the background objects such as the road or the building or not not these main foreground objects have also been identified and given a specific uh, pixel color. So that's the main difference between panoptic segmentation and instant segmentation. Uh, panoptics, in, a in addition to classifying and segmenting just the main foreground objects, panoptic segmentation will also assign a, a pigment color and uh, classify background less important objects in the picture as well. Okay, so, so Detectron 2 also offers two additional algorithms that are uh, for s s sophisticated pose detection of humans. So I was thinking maybe we could try a different image for those algorithms. See here, we've got these pictures of these three soccer players, which I think is gonna be perfect for um, pose detection because they all kind of have these different interesting poses. So 
let's try this image against this dense pose algorithm and see what we get back. So first let's click on post, then try it out. Browse. I'm going to upload that image here and press execute and let's see what we get back. Okay, cool. So as you can see here, dense pose has uh, created a bounding box around all these players. And in addition, what it's done is it's mapped all the 2D pixels corresponding to a person into a 3D surface-based model of the body. So this kind of these kind of lines here are meant to are meant to offer a 3D representation of uh, Neymar and his specific pose at this time, which I think is pretty cool. And then finally, let's try person key point detection. We'll give it the same image. Click here and then execute and we'll see what we get back okay cool and what person key point detection has done is it has uh, created a human pose skeleton for each of the football players here as you can see and what a human pose skeleton is a set of coordinates that could be connected to describe the specific pose of a person and each set of coordinates in this human skeleton kind of corresponds to a specific joint here like an elbow joint or a knee or kind of you see here is hand here. So this skeleton here should give you a good indication as to what the pose of each individual person in this picture is. Okay, so thank you so much for listening. And um, I look forward to bringing you a, a new Ironize project next week. And I will talk to you then.